everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is wonderful that you are here with me today on another Wanderlust Wednesday. Today we will be traveling to the country of Kenya. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Below each video, click the thumbs up. And also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. Okay, so are you ready to travel? All right, well pack your suitcase and hop on that plane and let's travel to Kenya. Kenya is in Eastern Africa. It is bordered by several countries there in Africa and also the Indian Ocean. Kenya's capital and largest city is called Nairobi. Farming makes up the largest part of Kenya's economy and its largest crops are tea, coffee, and fresh flowers. If you were to travel to Kenya, you would notice that the climate is very sunny. They receive sunshine most days and their nights are cool. Kenya has a long rain season and a short rain season. Long rains are usually between March and June, and the short rain season is usually between October and December. Rainfall during these seasons is very heavy and it occurs in the afternoons and the evenings. Kenya has a large portion of its land devoted to wildlife. The big five game animals of Africa, those being the lion, the leopard, the buffalo, the rhinoceros, and the elephant can all be found in Kenya. And Kenya is actually home to the largest animal migration as animals travel to find food. In addition to the big five, Kenya also has a significant population of other wild animals, reptiles, and birds as well. There are a total of 69 languages spoken in Kenya, though the official languages are Swahili and English. The majority of Kenyans are Christian, though Kenya also has the highest number of Quakers in the world. Another religion that you might find in Kenya, the second highest practiced, is the religion of Islam. Music is very important in Kenya, and you could hear many different types of music as you walk down the street. You could hear any number of different types of folk music. One other thing that you might notice as you listen to Kenyan music is the drums. Drums are the most dominant instrument in popular Kenyan music. Kenya is very active in the sporting world, too. If you were to go there, you could find any number of sports being played around you. You might see cricket or rallying, football, rugby, field hockey, or boxing. And Kenya often places well in Olympic competitions. As for the food of Kenya, Kenyans typically have three meals a day breakfast, lunch, and supper. They also have 10 o'clock tea and 4 p.m. tea. Breakfast is usually tea or porridge with bread or boiled sweet potatoes, and a common lunchtime food is a traditional meal of maize and legumes. A traditional maize flour porridge with vegetables and meat is eaten by much of the population for supper. A couple other just interesting facts about Kenya are that members of the Maasai tribe in Kenya spit on their palms before shaking hands. It's also been observed that men spit on newborn babies and say they are bad in the belief that if they praise a baby, it will be cursed. The Maasai warriors also have a famous jumping dance ritual, and this is known as a dumu, and it's performed when kids reach adulthood. This celebration can go on for as long as 10 days. Another interesting fact about Kenya that I didn't know and didn't expect is that there are lakes throughout the country. The Great Rift Valley runs through Kenya, and because of that, Kenya has a lot of lakes. Lake Turkana is one of them, and it is the world's largest permanent desert lake. And on that lake, there are a lot of flamingos. So I thought it would be fun today to make our own handprint flamingos that could live in Kenya. So to do this activity, you will need a few supplies. You will need three clothespins. These are the ones that spring open and close as you press them. You will need some pink cardstock. I'm using this glitter paper, which I think is really fun because one, it's glittery, and two, it's a little extra stiff. 
Um, I have a link below this video so that you could purchase this paper if you don't already have some. If you don't use this paper and you just use regular cardstock, you'll probably want to glue it together, glue two pieces together before you get started just so your handprint stays upright. So then you just, if this were just a regular piece of cardstock, I would just glue it with my glue stick and I would put another piece of cardstock right on top of it before I get started. You can find great pink cardstock too. Um, you will also need some scissors, you will need some Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can water down some glue, about 50% glue to 50% water, and you can mix it together and get basically the same type of stuff. Uh, you will need an orange pipe cleaner. You will need one or two googly eyes, depending on if your flamingo will be seen from both sides or just one side. If it's seen from just one side, like this one that I have here, you'll only need one eye. If you want it to be seen from both sides, you should have two. Uh, you'll need some white glue, you will need some pink paint, and a foam brush, and also a regular paint brush, and then you will need some water and a paint palette for that, and paper towels are always great to have around. Um, you will need a pencil, and then you will need some tissue paper in the colors of green and blue. Oh, and the last thing, and maybe most important for this, is that you will need some surface protection. You'll be painting and you'll be gluing, so you want to make sure that your surface is protected. So, let's get started. All right, well the first thing that we are going to do, because paint takes time to dry, is we are going to paint our clothes pins. So we'll take our pink paint and our paintbrush and we will get started. I'll pour out some paint and I am just going to paint these clothespins um, just all over. So this is one of those things that you will get your hands a little bit messy but that's okay because hands wash off, right? So what I do is I just get kind of a base coat on and you will see that I am not getting completely the entire uh, clothespin just yet and that's because I'm holding on to it. Like I said, we'll get a little bit painty, but I'm still going to try not to get super, super painty because I don't want to accidentally put that paint on the rest of my craft. So I am going over just a first coat here, and I'm going pretty light because I want it to dry quickly. And I am just covering everything that I can cover as I hold the clothespin in one spot. If I get a little bit on me, I get a little bit on me. That's totally cool, um, but you know, it's finding that right balance between being incredibly messy and just being artistic, right? All right, so I am just painting over here. Like I said, it's a light layer. This will dry pretty quickly, and then you will be able to go back and paint the places that you missed. I'm also making sure to get inside there I don't want to open it though right now because if I opened it I might be tempted to paint inside the uh, clothespin and then that might actually keep it from opening as the paint dries. So I want to make sure that it's closed but I'm going to get as close as I can inside there. And I'm also going to try to get kind of in there in between the back. Like I said, any place that you don't get right now, you will absolutely be able to touch up a little bit later. So don't worry too much about it. Just get as much as you can. All right, and actually, you know what? I see this very first one that I started with. Looks pretty dry, and it is. I picked it up with no problem. So now I am going to go over and paint the spots that I missed, and maybe just give that first coat a bit of a second coat. You will have a couple places, a couple times during this project that you can touch up your paint here. So don't worry too much about it, but I always like to take the opportunity when I see that it has presented itself in dry paint, I like to take that opportunity to finish up or to touch up any spots that I can. All right, so I'm just getting in there on the back and, oh, I guess I didn't actually get the front of that one. So I will get the front. And again, these are very light layers because that makes them dry quicker. But you can also see that I am getting my uh, hands a little bit painty too. That's okay, that's what the paper towels are for and what soap and water is for afterwards, right? Okay, so 
I still have not completely gotten all of the uh, clothespins pink, but that's okay. I will have time to do that in a little bit. All right, so now I am going to wipe off all of the paint that I got on my hands, or all of the wet paint, I should say. See, I still have some pink, but it's dry, so it's not going to be coming off onto anything that I don't want it to come off onto. And then I am going to move over here, and I am going to draw the body of my flamingo. So I have this glitter paper and it's kind of hard to draw on. If you have it too, I would recommend that you flip it over. <clears throat> and then I am going to trace my hand. So I'm going to put my pinky as close to the edge as I can comfortably. And I am going to spread out these four fingers. And then I am going to take my thumb and I am going to try to make an L kind of between it and my index finger because this is the part that will stand up to become the neck and the head of the flamingo, your thumb is. All right, so then once I have that, I push down really hard with the hand that I don't normally draw with. I push down and then I take the hand that I do draw with and I just gently go around. I have found the secret to tracing my hand is to not press hard with the pencil. You press hard with the other hand and then you just lightly go around with the pencil. And then you can see that I connected there from where I started and where I ended. And now I have something that's pretty easy to cut out. All right, so I am just going to cut out. And I will tell you, cutting out hands can kind of get a little bit cumbersome. So this is my trick sometimes for cutting out hands. I go along the fingertips as I cut out just kind of the circle of my hand. I, I'm going to go down on the line here, just on the side of my pinky. And then I have this, and then this is much easier to turn and manipulate so that I can easily cut out around my fingers. So then I just cut right there, and then I'll take this tip of the finger, also known as a fingertip, and then I cut down in here, and it's a lot easier than trying to move that great big piece of paper with all of those cuts in it. All right, so I just have two more to go. And of course, this does not have to be perfect. Nothing that we do has to be perfect. You get as close as you can to the lines, and that is absolutely going to be wonderful. All right, so now, I have my flamingo body and now I am going to go back to my uh, clothes pins and I put my brush in the water because I didn't know how long it would take me to cut out my hand so I put it in the water so I am going to now dry it off completely with my paper towel and then I am going to go back and do a final coat of paint on these clothes pins. And you know what, these clothespins do not have to be completely perfectly pink. You paint them as much as you want to. All right, and I see a little bit there that is kind of bare, so I'm going to go in there and I'll get on the end. And you see I'm just painting across the, the little metal piece that keeps the clothespin together. And I'm painting underneath anywhere that I kind of see is just a little bit bare. I will get one final time and then I am going to let them dry. I am going to call this good. Just that one last piece there. Oh, and then I see in here, sometimes that's a, kind of a hard spot to get, but if you can just lay your brush down right there and just kind of wiggle it around, you get it pretty well covered. All right. So those are in their final drying spot. And then I'll put my paintbrush in the water again so that it doesn't dry out. And then I am going to move on to my, uh, my habitat for my flamingo. And I am realizing just right now that I forgot to tell you, you need an extra, well you need one. I have my extra paper plate underneath my flamingo habitat and that is why I forgot to tell you that you need it. So this is um, a 
kind of an extra sturdy paper plate. Oops, you know what, these flamingos sometimes don't want to stand the best, but they always do. You just have to be a little bit patient with them. So anyway, this paper plate is a little bit sturdier than most. You could use a flimsier one, but it seems to me that the best results will have kind of this sturdy, like kind of a cardboard um, paper plate. So you will need one of those, and that is obviously in the supply list below. All right, so now we are going to take our uh, tissue paper and we are going to cut it into squares. And the best way to cut this tissue paper into squares is to leave it all together. So usually tissue paper comes layered with five or six layers. So leave it together and then you are going to cut one strip across all the layers at once. So I still, you can see here I have several pieces of tissue paper there. And then I am going to cut one one-ish, one-ish inch, one-inch-ish <laughs> strip along the edge of my green tissue paper. And this should probably be close to enough green. And then I am going to cut it into squares. Of course, if you find out that you don't have enough tissue paper, then you can always go back to your stack of tissue paper and cut one more strip. But I think this will probably be enough. So then I'm just cutting it into squares, and you'll see that it's still all together in its five or six layers. All right, so now I have my green, and now I'm going to do the same with my blue tissue paper. And you can see here that I have two different colors of blue because I thought that just added a little bit of extra depth and a little bit of extra fun to the project. And so I have actually stacked the blues on top of each other, and I am going to cut them just like I did the green, and I am going to cut them as one. So I have dark blue and I have light blue and I am just cutting down here a one inch sort of strip. You can see there that it moved a little bit on me. That's totally fine. These do not have to be exact at all. So then I am going to cut these into squares and I will keep these squares separate from my green squares so that I can easily do my craft. So keep these separate. You can mix your blues, but keep your blues and greens separate. And you know, I know that we don't need actually as much blue as green, so I think I probably have enough, so I will put that on the other side. All right, now we are going to go ahead and make our habitat that the flamingo will live in. So I am going to take my Mod Podge and open it, and then I'm going to take my foam brush you can see this Mod Podge has been used and used and used, and I need to clean the top off, but I never do. It still works. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to dip my foam brush into my Mod Podge, and I am just going to paint a light layer right here in the center. I'm not going to go too far out, but I'm just going to kind of cover that center part. And then I am going to put my tissue paper, my blue tissue paper, to represent the lake that the flamingo lives in on the plate. And you can see here that that was kind of hard to get that tissue paper separate. So guess what? Here is my easy squeezy tip. You take your foam brush that has just a little bit of Mod Podge on it, just from putting the, the initial Mod Podge on your plate, and you can very easily pick up your tissue paper just by using that brush. And you know what I just realized as I see that I'm putting Mod Podge on my um, on my table, I should have my surface protection underneath my workspace. So I'm kind of playing a little bit of Tetris here. Do you know that game Tetris? Trying to move all of these things around in the same spot, but okay, here we go. All right, so now I can officially start. <laughs> so make sure you've got your work surface covered before you work. All right, so I am taking my pieces of uh, tissue paper off by using my foam brush, and I'm kind of mixing up the light and the dark blue. And you can see that I am not painting them down yet. I will eventually put Mod Podge on top of them. But right now, I am just kind of getting them stuck in that initial little area that I first put Mod Podge down on my plate. So when you get to about this spot, then you can take your Mod Podge and very gently just start going over your tissue paper. 
If you see that there's a piece where the tissue paper is standing up, kind of go at it from the other angle if you don't want it to, to fold. It's okay if it folds a little bit though too. You know that just adds texture to your leg. I guarantee water is not always completely flat. Think about all those ripples that you see in lakes. All right, so now I have the center of my lake done, and I think I'm going to add a little bit more blue around here. I want a bigger lake. So I just put some Mod Podge down, as you saw, just around the outer edge of uh, the lake, and I am just adding on pieces. And because that Mod Podge is on the plate, it is grabbing the tissue paper away from my brush, so it just sticks beautifully. All right, I think that is a pretty good leg, a pretty good size, so now I will put my um, Mod Podge over the top, and we now, once we have it completely covered, which I think it is, we now have our leg. All right, so now I am going to move on to my green, this would be the area around the lake, and I am going to do the same thing. Actually, I forgot to put a little bit more Mod Podge around the outside of the tissue paper, so I'm going to do that right now. And then I am going to start putting my green on. And it's the same type of situation. You just continue using your brush and the stickiness and just start sticking. Okay, and then once I have my outer level there, or my outer round, then I will take some Mod Podge and put over the top of it. You can see I kind of squished that piece there and this piece there. Sometimes you can move it around a little bit, but you know what? It is not a big deal if that happens. You can just Mod Podge over it. Again, it's texture in your landscape. Oh my goodness, we have a big truck going by. Did you just hear that? <laughs> I hope you could still hear me over it. All right, so now I have gone over that first layer of green, and now I am going to continue doing the same. Even though there is a rim here along the paper plate, the uh, tissue paper and Mod Podge will just go right over it. It's just so cool that way. So you can see it just sticks right there, and then you'll just be able to, when you put your Mod Podge on the top of your tissue paper, it will just mold down around the edge, just like this one. So you just continue on. So it is up to you to decide how far out you want to go with your tissue paper and Mod Podge. I think I will go one more layer out. And it's also up to you if you decide that you want to make sure that there's no white showing, no white from the plate showing, or if you want some white to show, it's all up to you. But you can see I have put that layer of stickiness on the rim of my plate and now I am just going to go around and cover it with my last layer of tissue paper. This is such a fun little craft to do with it's like stamping almost. <laughs> just moving the tissue paper over with your brush and sometimes they get stuck and that's okay, then you just use your hands to fix it. But man, this is there's something so satisfying about this. <laughs> Okay, so I am just going to finish up here, and then I will cover this with my last layer of Mod Podge. Of course, the Mod Podge, it starts out white, but it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. And um, I would just recommend that you make sure that all of your Mod Podge, when you are done, looks like it has been covered. You'll be able to tell, even if it's dry, and it's just kind of a little bit glossy, so you'll notice that. And if you see anything that looks like it's not glossy, I would put just a little bit more Mod Podge on it just to make sure that it stays stuck to your plate. And with these edges you see here, you can kind of take your brush and form them under the plate if you want, or you can just let them hang out. 
it's up to you. Clearly, if this were actually in the wild, there would be some wildness to it, right? They wouldn't necessarily be these really um, green uh, lawns that are, you know, cared for meticulously with the lawn mowers. There would definitely be some wildness to it. So I think this is so much up to you, however you decide to finish it. Just make sure that all of your pieces, all of your corners are stuck down. Otherwise, they might kind of peel off. All right, so you can still see some white, but that will dry. I am going to just go over it to kind of spread that last coat of white out because if it's thinner, it'll dry quicker. All right, so now we are going to put our foam brush in the water to wash it to make sure that we can use it for another activity. And now I am going to put my habitat aside and I am going to go ahead and put my flamingo together. All right, so the thumb of your hand is the neck of the flamingo. So that, <laughs> here look, the Mod Podge stuck to me. I've got tissue paper on me. I am that wild habitat right now. All right, so anyway, now you get to take your eye and, oh, you know what, I was gonna stick it on the wrong spot. First, let's put together our flamingo. So we are going to give the flamingo a foot and a leg and another foot and a leg. And then we are going to give our flamingo its neck and head. All right, now you get to put on your eye. And if you have two-sided paper, if you have pink cardstock, it's probably two-sided. Or if you decide to color this side, or if you decide to just leave it white and you want people to see both sides, this is where you would put on both eyes. I'm just going to have a one-sided flamingo. I'll only have people view it from the front. So I'm just going to have one eye. So I put on the eye with some white glue onto the edge of the uh, clothespin. And then I am going to take just a small portion of this orange pipe cleaner. I'll cut off, um, I don't know, is that what, an inch probably? And then I am going to put just a little bit of white glue on it. And then I am going to simply stick it down in that V, just right like that and you can angle it up if you want or angle it down, however you want it. And there we go. We have a very cute handprint flamingo that is just looking for a habitat to live in. So ideally, you would wait for your habitat to completely dry before you put your flamingo in. It's not the end of the world if you rush it a little bit, <laughs> which is what I am going to do to show you how fun this flamingo looks in this habitat. And I will tell you, these take a little bit of adjusting to get your flamingos to stand, but they will stand. This is great, a great activity to learn about balance and also to learn a little bit about patience. All right, so it feels a little heavy back there. So you just move the legs around a little bit until you find that great balance point for your flamingo. Oh, I almost, I thought I had it there. It helps if your, um, your clothespins are all the way onto the cardstock. All right, did I get it? Not quite. He wants to lean forward. Must be some really good water there that he wants to fall into. All right, there we go. So you can see, now this flamingo, actually, one of these uh, clothespins is standing straight up and the other one is very angled. So keep working with it, it absolutely will work. I would love to see pictures of your flamingos. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture and put that on our Facebook page. Well, thank you so much for traveling with me to Kenya today. I hope that you've had fun. I hope that you've enjoyed making your flamingo. I will be seeing you on Friday to talk about a fun film. I just can't wait. Until I see you then, thanks so much for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.